If you are someone who sets annual goals, then surely you have thought about what you want to achieve in 2024 by now. I have been a little caught up with other things. As a productivity and goals coach, I was so excited to help my coaching clients and my Goal Slayer Gals community really solidify their goals. And then as a mom of four little kids, I have been consumed with getting my kids through winter break and back to school and dealing with the inevitable winter germs that everybody goes through. Plus, I work full time as a professor. So starting back in on that new semester was a lot. Suffice it to say, January flew by and now it is February 5th when I am filming this and I still had not had a chance to really think about what I want to achieve until just recently. So I took some time and I jotted down both my 2023 goals so that I can give you the assessment of how I did. And then I really clarified what is on my heart for this year ahead. In this video, I want to just break down my goal status and just walk you through how I do things in case it's of interest to you. If we haven't met, I'm Amber with Solutions for Simplicity and you can check on my channel. There are so many videos all about setting goals, tracking habits, how to be productive, better ways to use your time. I love sharing all of these tools and strategies that I have learned with you. So if you are someone who is looking to make more time for yourself and the things that bring you joy, this is the channel for you. Definitely subscribe and I'm just going to read through this list. We are going to start with my 2023 goals so that I can evaluate how I did. Now, if you watched my old goal video from last year, you will know that I separate my goals into three different categories. My academic goals for my main job, my business goals for solutions for simplicity, and then of course, personal goals. In 2023, I started that year thinking that it was going to be my year. I had had a really rough 2022 and an even rougher 2021 before that. And then of course the pandemic in 2020 was a disaster for me personally. It threw off so much. So, you know, while there are always good things that happen, we have just had a lot of really challenging years, my husband and I, and so I was so optimistic in the January of 2023 timeframe that I could make big, big things happen. I've had these dreams on my heart for a while and yeah, so my main goal was to finish the academic book that I have been writing for years now. <laughs> It is just an ongoing project and I won't make you wait for the punchline on that one. Maybe it won't surprise you, but it's still not done. It is farther along than it was. I have made great progress. I have a concrete plan for finishing it now, but it's just been so hard to do that work and to really get into the flow state I need to be in to write that original book when I've had so many hard personal things going on. And I guess I'll, I'll take a moment and walk you through all of that. If you followed my channel, you might know some of these things. And the point is then that in real life, we always have unexpected challenges that change our plans, right? We make these grand plans, we have these big ambitions, and life sometimes has its own journey. So the biggest, hardest thing that happened for me last year was my mom, who had been battling cancer and chronic disease prior to that, ended up passing away in March. And immediately, the beginning of February, I had flown out to Colorado and got to spend weeks with her up until the end, but I was still working and doing so much on the side and it was, it was just a lot. And then I needed time to process all of that. Not that you're ever done <laughs> grieving, but that was huge for me. And um, so again, I just, I couldn't really work on a big project like my book last spring. And then I was able to be on sabbatical in the fall. That had been one of my goals was to get approved for a sabbatical. And I was, and I got to take it last fall. But then in the middle of my sabbatical, I found out that I had cancer myself. And fortunately, it was a kind that was relatively easy to fix and, and I had surgery and, you know, things are okay. But that was really hard and it was both physically challenging. It was also really mentally and emotionally exhausting because 
you know, you never really think that it's going to happen to you, especially at a semi young age. I am definitely getting older. And in fact, I turned the big 4-0 last year, but it still really took me by surprise to think that that could be me. And it was. So I needed to take time for my health and, and getting better from that. And it again, derailed me a little bit during my sabbatical, didn't get the academic work done. It's okay. It is okay. Um, so anyway, those were the big things that happened and they explain why I didn't reach all of the goals that I had last year. I will of course just say that if you are a mom, you know that life with kids, especially multiple young kids is a whirlwind. It is so crazy. And I have four boys. They are so amazing, but they just, they need me, right? At this stage, it is very constant and it leaves me feeling less, uh, less able to pour into myself and my dreams than I know I will get to as they get older and more self-sufficient. My oldest had turned 10. My youngest uh, was one last year, just turned two. So still very much in the thick of it. Second academic goal was to write a new paper and submit that for publication. I did do that. I was very proud of myself for that. And then my third academic goal was to get this one article published that had gone through rounds and rounds of revise and resubmit. But it was at a really, really good journal, like one of the top in my field. And it finally, finally did get accepted last December, like just a couple months ago. And I am over the moon excited about that because I had wanted it so bad. I worked on this project for years. That's what's crazy in my academic world is that like you can write something and work so hard and it's never done for years and years on end. And then, you know, the more work you have to put into it to get it to that finish stage is just, I should keep track. Side notes, if you hear noise in the background, it's trash day and they're coming around to do all of that. So that's what I get for filming first thing on a Monday morning. Uh, all right, and then I mentioned my fourth academic goal was to get that sabbatical. And I just thank God that that did get approved because I couldn't have even known how much I needed that break. Now, a sabbatical is not time off by any means. In fact, there were even higher expectations on me in terms of what I would produce research-wise. It was buying me out of teaching and my committee requirements, my service aspects of my job. And that was the benefit, right? Not having to go into campus, not having to um, re receive a million emails from students all of the time, and just being able to focus on one dimension of my work was amazing. Uh, it definitely gave me more flexibility and then enabled me to like to have my surgery and the other things with a lot less headache than it would have been if I was teaching at the same time. But it was still a lot of work and uh, yeah, the, the pressure to produce really weighs on me. That is just something that goes along with my job in academia. I, I just, I needed time to step back, if you will, and take time off teaching because I have, let's see, I've been teaching for, well, since 2007. So however, however many years that is, math is not my forte, but I've been teaching at the university level since I started earning my PhD in 2007. I have been at my current university for 11 years now, and I jumped through so many hoops to get tenure. And then after tenure was when the pandemic hit and it just, like, it's been so wild. And then I never felt like I could take a sabbatical until I finally got to. Um, so that was that was just really really great, and it makes me want more, right? I won't I won't get to have another one of those for a while. All right, if you are even still with me at this point, comment down below with some of your goals for 2023 and how you did on them, whether you reached them, and um, you know what might have come up for you. It would I, I don't want your dreams to have been derailed, but it's always nice to know that you're not alone. My next category of goals for 2023 were my business goals. And the biggest thing I had wanted last year was to start investing in myself and in my business. 
And I'm kind of amazed that I had not ever done this before, but I totally did reach this goal. I'm so proud of myself for reaching out and starting to work with a business coach who's also my life coach and she's just been amazing. And then I really invested in a program to help launch a podcast because my big kind of goal for the year was to start a podcast and you know, if you have been following me, that I had to set that aside last fall because of everything that came up with my health. And it was so heart-wrenching to have to push pause on that. I was making really good progress through this podcast program. I have so much to say, so many ideas, and I just needed to let something go at that moment. So the podcast had to get put on pause. Um, my next goal was to hire help so that I could do more in my business. And I started doing this last spring. I really did work with some amazing video editors and other people to help me with various aspects. But when I had all the grief and personal stuff come up, I couldn't get what I needed to done to give to those people to help me. And so that's something else that I need to circle back to now. But really all these years that I've had solutions for simplicity, I have mostly been a one woman show and I squeeze this into the, the little pockets of time around my academic work and mom life. And, and it just is getting hard because there's, there's only so much time in a day, right? Uh, I had really dreamed big and I wanted to make six figures in my business last year and I got closer than ever. It was, it was amazing. It was so wonderful to know that I was helping and reaching these women who were working with me through my personal coaching or the monthly membership I run, the different programs that I offer, particularly my Harness Your Energy program was a huge success last year. And I can't wait to do more of all of that this year, but I was close and not quite at the ultimate goal I had in terms of my revenue last year. Um, all right, and then I had wanted to get 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, but that didn't happen. I am so grateful for the 3,100 or so subscribers that I have here as of this current date. You all mean so much to me and I love that you are joining me in this journey. And I've kind of given up on the vanity metric in terms of numbers of subscribers. That is just a number. What I realize is much more important is the connection that I'm able to build with the right viewers, the right people, the right clients, the right you know, women who need what I have learned the hard way and am all too happy to share. So um, I kind of laugh at myself for wanting to hit these coveted vanity metrics in my business up to this point. And I'm okay that I didn't reach that goal. I also take responsibility for it because if I had been able to be more consistent with the videos I put out, then I probably would have come a lot closer, but I had to set YouTube aside. I was not able to be regular on Instagram when I was losing my mom and processing grief and trying to keep up with my more important uh, job. Like, don't take that the wrong way. I'm not saying my job is more important than you. It's just that I have responsibilities and you know if you work or if you have a family that that has to take precedence even when your heart wants to be working on your own goals. All right, and then the final business goal was a very important one. It was to find better work-life balance, to not be such a workaholic. And there were moments where I did pretty well at this, but ultimately it is still something that I struggle with for the reason I just mentioned. I'm trying to do so much in the limited time that I have and it's easy to push myself and stay up late to get things done or like, you know, just put my own health and sleep and other things on the back burner because I'm so passionate about solutions for simplicity. But that isn't healthy and still something I really need to work on. All right, personal goals I did really well with and I'm very proud of that. I had wanted to get in amazing shape. I was very conscious of turning 40 and then seeing my mom go through what she did at a relatively young age. Like I just knew that I needed to prioritize my health. Plus I had spent the last 10 years being pregnant, nursing, all the things that go along with putting your family first. 
And uh, so in the fall, I definitely made a push to get in the best shape ever. I was so freaking proud of myself because to do that, I revisited the Insanity workout program that I had got, I had done back in 2012, before I ever got pregnant and had uh, my first son. A friend and I had done this super intense program and it was a 60 day program and I didn't think that I could ever do it again after having kids. But I just decided, you know what? I want to work out. I want to work out hard. I pushed myself. I, I made adjustments as needed, but I definitely stuck it out for those 60 days and saw amazing results. I didn't lose as much weight as I was hoping to lose, but I just felt so strong and empowered and mentally, emotionally, my husband even said that it was like I was a brand new person. So that motivated me to keep going. But then uh, despite all that progress in August, September, October, I had to have the surgery in November and I couldn't do much after that. So now it's been several months and I'm out of the good workout routine. Gotta come back to it for 2024. The other personal goal I had was to eat more healthy and cook better meals for my family. And this was kind of a wash. I had a lot of times where I made good healthy things and then plenty of moments where it was just like, hey, let's pull out frozen lasagna. We're gonna go through the Wendy's drive through I don't even know, just find something for yourself in the refrigerator. And I definitely was relying on these are my downfall, right? These uh, dark chocolate sea salt caramels. I have these by my desk and I'll just chew on those way too much. So there are so many things that I could and should do to be healthier, but I was good about drinking lots of water and trying to have a lot of protein and you know just eat more homemade meals for the most part. Still something I wanna work on. All right. Let's move on to 2024 goals because again, I'm feeling sort of behind. And yet, if you are a busy mom, then I think the date really doesn't matter. It's, it's nice to start in January, but that just doesn't jive with the season of life that I'm in. And so I really do kind of use January as an adjustment period to get started in the new year. And February seems to be the pattern now for when I really solidify what I wanna do and start in on working towards that. Uh, academically for 2024, of course, book is still on there. And as mentioned, I have a more concrete plan for getting that done. Please check in on me, bug me about it. It needs to happen. My goal for the spring is to have the book under contract with a prestigious publisher. I'm going to a conference in April where I should meet with some publishers. And I also have a big university press that is interested in the book. And so hopefully I can just get them the proposal and they will uh, wanna get it under contract even before the book is done. Please pray for that. That would be huge for me. Um, okay, and then my other academic goal is to publish at least two more new articles. I have one in the works right now, plenty of other ideas, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get more, more done that way because my university wants to see lots of active research. And the challenge with research is then again that it's hard to sit down and get much done when you're you're working in short pockets of time around office hours with students and again those committee meetings and everything else it's it's just a lot to juggle but that's that's kind of what i do i juggle all the things uh business goals okay business goals for 2024 just light me up i am so encouraged by the trajectory of solutions for simplicity and I guess, you know, you've seen me from day one or you can go back and revisit all of my other videos, particularly the ones where I shared my goals. And the punchline is that I have done a lot of throwing spaghetti at the wall over these past four or five years. I It'll be five years in August since I officially launched this business. And it really wasn't a business until this past year. 
and it's only been recently that I'm taking it so seriously and that I have the clarity I need to figure out what to focus on, where I'm getting the most bang for my buck, where I'm making the biggest impact, and where I feel most called to serve. So uh, again, like I'm not setting a revenue goal this year. I just really know what I need to do to move forward and take my business to the next level. And I'm so excited for that. The bigger goal that I have is to finally launch my podcast. I'm back working at it. And so stay tuned. I will let you know, but I'm hoping that that comes live this spring. And then my next business goal is that I have had the honor of giving several public talks and I just have realized how much I want to be a public speaker. I love being in front, that sounds weird to say that I love being in front of people because I still get very nervous. <laughs> um, so I, I'm not like a, a hugely extroverted person, but again, I just have so much on my heart to share that the opportunity to get up and speak in front of people feels so right. And so my goal for this year is to do at least five public speaking engagements. I'm really excited to report that I already have three lined up. And then I just got invited to be the keynote speaker for another conference and got invited to apply to be a speaker at one in September. So I hope that this is a quite reachable goal. I would love to do this more and more. And I think as I'm able to get up and word starts to get around that hopefully more opportunities will present themselves. In order to be prepared for that and do the best job possible, I made another investment in myself and my business. And I recently joined a program with a voice coach to solidify my signature talk and get all of her advice and feedback so that I can be the best speaker I can be. So I'm excited to see how that helps me improve. And I know it will give me more confidence for the speaking gigs that I already have. Uh, last business goal is more of a, a habit one. You'll see a theme here as I go through these goals that I have some big goals, but more than anything, I just realized that they won't happen unless I commit to the daily actions and the routine habits that will get me there. And that's where I've struggled in the past. I'll start off so great and then life happens and I don't keep up with those habits. So then I don't get the results that I want. Um, so in terms of business habits, I want to be so much more consistent with what I am um, putting out, what I'm making for you, when I'm getting it out there so that you know what to expect and so that all the algorithms of these various platforms know what I do and when to promote my videos and, and stuff like that. So I wanna just streamline all of my content production and get it out there so that you receive it. Personal goals. All right. By this point in the video, if you are still with me, give me the thumbs up emoji, maybe thumbs up this video if it is inspiring you to dream big yourself. And then put in the comments what one of your goals for 2024 is because I would love to cheer you on. I get so much joy out of seeing the big things that you guys want to do and I'm here to support you in any capacity I can. I also want to underscore that remember dreams don't have to be big, especially if you're in a busy season of life like me. Start small. Start with something, just dedicating more time to whatever it is that lights you up because that will snowball and make you better for everyone you love. My personal goals are to have monthly dates with my husband. I've mentioned before, but I think you can imagine with four little kids and both of us working and all of the big family losses and hardship we've been through in the last four years, it's been, it's been rough. It's been really rough. And I'm so in love with my husband, but we just don't have the time and the energy for each other that we would under other circumstances. And the way we're gonna get that back is by putting ourselves on the calendar. So we've already gone ahead and scheduled babysitters and made plans for dates every month through the summer. Um, and then we'll revisit fall and, and see how, if at all things need to shift around at that point. 
but I've already, we just had the best time in January and then we're going out again this Friday and we get to also go to something on Saturday. And it's, it's amazing how good it feels to just like be a couple without having to also worry about where the kids are and how everybody's doing. And we can have that uninterrupted conversation at dinner the way we never can at home. So uh, big priority is to prioritize my marriage. Then I really want to make and stick with a sustainable health and exercise program. I'm so proud of myself for pushing hard on insanity, but that's not sustainable, especially because those workouts get kind of long. It's like um, upwards of 60 minute workouts that I just don't have all of the time. I wanna do a mix of Pilates and strength training and cardio. I love running and so just kind of mix it up in a way that keeps my brain engaged and excited and challenges my body, but is something that fits with my busy schedule. And then that I stick to it instead of pushing really hard and then doing nothing, right? I'm kind of, I've been on either extreme last year and I wanna find a consistent, workout habit where it just becomes part of my normal life. Last but not least, I, of course, am gonna continue to prioritize self-care and I didn't, I just haven't done great at this. I need to get more sleep. I need to take more time off. So one of the things that I am scheduling in from the beginning this year is one day a week that I'm taking as a flex day. And I'm not like taking off work, but I'm anticipating that I'm not gonna plan meetings on those days. I'm not, um, basically I'm just kind of leaving myself some open space on my calendar for whatever work projects need to get done on that moment. And that way I'm not overbooking myself and things hopefully don't come down to the wire as much as they sometimes do. I'm also trying to give myself one week a month where I just kind of leave it as catch up time as well. So building in more buffers into my plans. Then um, I, I just really want to start taking better care of my skin and all the, th all the things that go along with aging. I'm getting, I'm getting self-conscious, I suppose, about the gray hair and the wrinkles and I, I wanna just embrace it, but I admit it's, it's a different position to be in. And uh, so anyway, all the ways that I can take care of myself, I need to do that. Give me a big thumbs up if you are still with me. If you too want to prioritize yourself and your dreams for 2024, I will keep checking in with you and I will put links down below to all of my goal resources and the different playlists where I share all kinds of advice for goal setting and, and so forth. But don't forget to subscribe. I will see you back soon with another video. And if you haven't yet, check out this video where I review my my new goal setting planner that I am gonna open up and start filling out right now. <laughs>